Happy Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. My goodness, what a better day than today to review your fall DK30 projects. First of all, I want to kick off by saying, what is DK30? So that way you can join in next time. DK30 is an event that we run twice a year where the idea is come up with something you can get done with in 30 days time. 30 days is long enough that it is actually substantive which you can produce but it's not so long that it's nebulous or overwhelming or sort of hard to track and so um we we begin this event twice a year where everyone starts their projects at the same time so we can be encouraging and supportive to one another and today is a few days after this dk30 ended just recently on november 18th that's last friday and then um Oh my God, I lost my train of thought because I'm tired. What on earth was I talking about? Oh yeah, we all get our project started at the same time. It wraps on November 18th. And then today, we showcase the amazing things that you all got done. Now, one of the big core things about DK30 is that this is not about success and productivity and being the best, most amazing outputter of a month's worth of stuff. It's really about learning more about yourself and just getting farther ahead than where you were. So for instance, I had this project set aside to learn Unreal. I have used a ton of different game engines in the last year. I mean, uh, notably you hear me talk a lot about Unity, but I've even used Torque. If any of you are familiar with Torque 2D. <laughs> uh, I, I have worked with completely custom ground up engines. I've worked with a lot of modding tools. Um, but Unreal, just interestingly, is one that I've never actually gotten the chance to do. So I said to myself, I want to, gosh, I'm gonna be really busy in October and November. I want to just set aside some time just to follow along with some tutorials and just make sure I understand how the engine works. And guess what? I didn't really hit my goal. But the whole point of DK30 is understanding yourself and being farther ahead than when you started. So what I did is actually wound up setting my bar kind of low, and because I was insanely busy, I replaced my pre-bedtime Twitch and social media grinding time by just watching Unreal tutorials on YouTube. Kind of like instead of just opening up another stream and seeing if Monkeys Forever is live again, or maybe Slam Jam is grinding 1v1 some team games. Instead, I just would pop open a tutorial and watch it, and I didn't even really do very much coding. And what was nice to me about this is that I'd set aside a small amount of time and set my bar relatively low, and now I'm starting to feel that barrier of entry into learning this engine. My barrier of entry feels so much lower because I've seen a bunch of hours of content and now I feel like I'm going to be able to accomplish my goal of getting some code built by the end of the year. And this is the one thing that I want to stress to anyone that ever embarks on some sort of project. If you are getting any progress done and you are adjusting and tuning within your schedule, within your energy levels, just getting started and making some progress, amazing things can happen. So as part of this uh, DK30 Fall 2022, we have a game jam. Because, well, if we're all going to get together and start at the same time and do stuff for a month, may as well make a video game. You know what I mean? May as well make a video game. So we gave uh, about a month and a few extra days for submitting. And the topic was Rise of the Machines. So the whole point of the Rise of the Machines um, game jam is that... Um, there's a lot more interesting tools that are emerging. I'm actually going to increase the size of this. There's a lot more interesting tools that are emerging with the ability to use machine learning, use AI, use weird digital supplements beyond someone sitting down and making the art, someone sitting down and making the code. Things like mid-journey to generate art assets, procedural generation, stable diffusion, things like this. These are interesting ways to supplement and even speed up or enhance elements of game development. But let's also be honest, this is not a competitive thing. We're not giving out any awards here. So, dude, do whatever the hell you want. 
with Rise of the Machines 2. So we encourage people to also maybe consider looking at large simulations, maybe if they're feeling adventurous, looking into machine learning. And if it just has machines in it and you think it's cool, feel free to make it. The whole point of DK30 is to get people to make some stuff and have fun doing so. So the first game that I want to look at was Elemental the Game. And I see got zoped in chat. I see you, Zope. And what's really interesting is the technology that... <laughs> warning contains explicit language. Don't worry. This is my channel. We are explicit all the time. The interesting thing about Elemental the Game is it uses something called Polycam, which is a way to sort of scan physical objects in real life and then import those models into the game, which is crazy. Like, I'd never even thought about this. And of course, want to give shout outs to the devs, Zope TFX, Hi, JCat, Merck, Sean, Makalop, Steven, Ghost, and of course, more information. Uh, if you want to download, all of these are linked on through our website, through the, um, where is it? The DK30 Fall Game Jam on itch.io. Uh, I am going to be running all of these in sandboxy, so that way I am running EXEs in a contained environment. But let's go ahead and hop in and check it out. Let's check out Rise of the Machines. Let me go ahead and run program. I have my little drop-down menu here. Elemental. Okay. All right, so. Yeah, I have this little program, Sandboxy Plus, that's really great for being able to run isolated environments. Move! All right, so here we are. WASD moves around. Let's go ahead and look at controls. All right, WASD movement, space jump. Oh, I can also use a game pad, but I want to flail with this hand. So I think I'll just use it like this. All right, escape is pause. All right, great. Tapes. Uh-oh, we've locked the tapes. All right, I'm hitting play. Let me turn down the volume as well. Sorry, I had it like maxed out. <laughs> All right. So, again, the thing that is just astonishing to me look, look at these art assets, these trees. Maybe if I collect enough of these figments, I'll be able to remember who I am. Yeah! One out of 96 figments, baby. So, like, first of all, in terms of the tech, look at how I've never seen anything like this. Again, the way that Polycam works is you just you just hold your camera and you sort of scan it around an object in order to generate a 3D image of it. And this is what we're wandering around. All right, so I'm going to collect some figments. I got my flashlight. I'm going to hit my jump button. Looks like I have a, a swipe. Ugh. Oh. Ch -ch -ch. Drenlin says, so it's Alan Wake slash Psychonauts. I am getting some SCP vibes in earnest. Hey, look, it's Homer. By the way, these projects are not monetized, so don't worry. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh, that's some nice music change, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is the edge of the world. All right, sorry, everyone. I fell off the edge of the world. This is so unbelievable. Like, I, I want to just take a moment. To note something. Refi says, are there any jump scares? Don't worry, I'll, I'll be the one getting jump scared. So, I, I, I dropped the volume a brief bit. Because I, I want to talk about something that is like very, 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 very hard to see with a lot of games. But a lot of game development stuff is just managing this giant throughput of art assets getting into the dang game and lots of polish elements getting into the dang game. So in terms of being able to capably test the ideas and capably build the environment for the ideas, 
the fact that polycam was used to be able to just get oops i'm sorry i keep walking right through the collision boxes well not through the collision boxes through the edge of the world here <laughs> But this is an incredibly efficient way to get a sort of first pass mood communication without needing to hurl a bunch of artists through making rock textures. I mean, look at this. This is a scanned image from Polycam. This is incredible. Like, you can see that there's roots and foliage. You can see bits of dirt. Very obviously, there's some odd deforming stretching going on, like with the way this leaf works. But this is not trying to be a final game. This is trying to be something produced in an incredibly short period of time. And it's incredible how much of the mood this captures cheaply and efficiently. There were less than 10 people that produced this in less than one month. And the fact that I can immediately get into this cave area... Ugh, and jump over here into this. Ooh, hell yeah. This different environment. Like, I, I, I cannot stress to you enough how many art assets are here and how incredibly difficult it would be to make, at, make all of these without this scanning tech. This is brilliant. And, of course, I'm a big audiophile, so the changes in mood with music is super sick. Like, look at this. This is incredible. And this sort of warbliness is uh, currently a, a common property with these sort of, like, use a phone to scan an image. Because there's, there's just not a, as much robust technology to really understand depth and reform 3D images based upon depth cues. Banta. Can I walk through here? Oh, another one getting lit up. I am just astonished. It's also it's also really fun to have Got Zoped, one of the engineers in chat typing things. Got Zoped says that we removed some of the jump scares and removed a lot of the combat last second. Yeah, great. I think that's... I, 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 this is so much stuff for one month. It's incredible. Dan Dagan says, doesn't... Uh, uh, you know, what about things like development debt? Um, yeah, so here's what I mean by how amazingly efficient this is. Imagine if I said to you, Dan Dagan, hey, I want to make a game where you explore through surreal landscapes and collect memories to discover who you are. Imagine this was the prompt. Now, if you're walking through this area and it's all gray boxed. Gray box, by the way, is where literally you make gray boxes and stack them on each other and say, imagine this, this box, imagine this was like a cylinder. But imagine taking a few extra days to scan all this stuff in put in some basic lighting. This was a quick turnaround to be able to produce something that much better communicates how evocative the mood can be with these sort of surrealist landscapes. Yeah, you know, health says, imagine this box being a cylinder. Yeah, yeah, I mean, legitimately, yeah. Because with these sort of, and I'm going to call them um, semi-realistic textures, like obviously this reads like a brick wall. It's a bit bent and warped due to the fact that this is how the scanning tech works. So you can obviously imagine that being fixed up a bit. But regardless, this reads and communicates immediately like a brick wall with all the subtlety and texture of like things that happen in natural brick walls. So for instance, when it rains, you'll get like some of the, 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 I don't know what the adhesive is between, like the, the stuff can, can drip and run down the front of the face. So you get these sort of like divotings and these little, you know, leakies that streak down. Mortar, thank you, Pupupotamus. There we go. 
you know, I think it's I think it's Elmer's glue. But like the fact that you can get these, and as I'm running through this area, even though, as at a glance, I know that these are first pass art assets. They still read and produce a sense of the environment. Like, again, dude, here, here is like a sort of industrial closet. We got like ladders. We got other assets in here. Not other assets, excuse me. Other objects in here, like cleaning supplies. These are the kinds of things that in a, in a gray box, you would go, dude, just imagine this is like a janitorial closet. Done. There's a reason why there are asset stores for Unreal and asset stores for Unity, because being able to quickly get a lot of assets is it's virtually impossible. And I've never seen anything quite like this. I, I want to do this now. Uh-oh. Oh, do we really have platforming challenges in here for me? And by the way, th th this is where I feel like there's a difference between commu communication and effectively complete gameplay versus all the polish associated. So right now, clearly these feet are here just floating above this object. And if I am if I'm running forward and I like strafe, my character's animation doesn't change. That's fine. That's fine. Like that's the sort of thing that you can do second. Give me one second. All right, sorry, the break came home. Oh, oh my God, no! Oh, thank God, it is a checkpoint. Can I use... <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so sick. Oh, I'm so not sick. <laughs> now, I also appreciate that given that the look and feel graphically of this has a lot of surrealism to it, that the lighting and audio and communication effects are really surreal. Look at this. I have the key. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to go back to that lock. But first, I have to catch them all. Oh my god. It's Merc. <laughs> it's Merc from the YouTube video. Uh, hey, look, I got a key. Like, dude, getting a hand like this? I'm actually curious. A Zoped, how long did it take to actually do a scan and import the asset into Unity? Ooh, nice little camera effects. Please. All you have to do is put the tape into the player. That's all I'm asking. All right, wh where's the player? Where's the player, man? Because there, um, God's up the biggest time sink is polycam processing, which can take up to 20 to 40 minutes. Jeez, that's like not bad at all. Um, but, you know, I, I know that there is this idea of, creatively speaking, I've heard um, George R. R. Martin talk about this, that there are people who are creatively their architects. They stop, they think about things top down, they plan, they write things out, and then they fill in this outline. Um, then there's gardeners that just kind of start, make something, and then go, hmm, let's just add a little bit more. Hmm, let's just add a little bit more. There's a giant VCR. Yeah, backseat me. Where, where, where was the giant VCR? And this sort of tech, I can imagine being used in both cases, right? Like, one way to look at this is, you know, how I would tend to think of things, which is this top-down, more outlinery style, where I'd go, wow, this is an incredibly effective way to, to quickly prototype something. Like, an astonishingly quick and effective way to get the communication in really good shape. Oh, here we go. <laughs> You're finally here. Oh, look at that typeface. So long since I've seen anyone. Thank you. No problem. I'm the best. 
But there isn't much time left. There are still tapes that need to be found. Please collect them and put them in the players. You got it. My life depends on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll go get the blue pages. I see you, Seeker42. I see you. <sighs> Thank you so much. My God. No one in a game has ever thanked me in advance. That's why I was just like, please! You have to find my sister! She's been captured by wolf dog demons! And then you do it. Oh god! Praise be to the fictional deity created for this game! And I'm like... Alright. We got some more keys here. So, since I am only going to be able to showcase some of these DK30 projects, I want to fiddle <laughs> just a little bit more. Oh, look at this. All you have to do is put the tape into the player. That's all I'm asking. This is incredibly effective. Like, my god, the sheer amount of art in this game is unbelievable. Hell yeah. The ending trajectory. Please and thank you. All right, what time are we at? One fifty-two. Because I, I need to go to the airport in a little bit. And I, I genuinely, I generally want to try to play these as much as humanly possible. All right, I see ya. Uh oh. Can I walk through this? All right, it seems I may have hit the collision box from the other side. Huh. Mmm. Oh, you silly little goo! All right, great. I popped through to the other side. Holy crap, dude! All right, I know that I boundary broke. All right, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, God zoped. I'm, I'm walking off the edge, so that way I can play through as the developer intended. So, so which direction should I head to? Which direction should I head to? There's a couple different places to go to. Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, there's literally two keys on the ground. Oh my God, I'm blind. Get in there. Yeah, and by the way, see, see, these are the things that I really feel like are just detail, right? Like, oh, we're going to put the keys down in front of the door. So that way the player sees them and understands that when they see these locks, they're looking for corresponding keys, and there you go, ta-da, done. Or like, oh, and then we play test, and Day9 literally doesn't see the tape right in front of this. Oh, so maybe you make the keys glow. Don't play that tape. You don't want me to play this one? It will break my brain. Oh, oh. I can't drop it. My fate is sealed. Okay, it looks like I sequence broke. <laughs> now, the thing is, sequence breaking is literally all that happens in a development pipeline. So, of course, this is, can get fixed and re-uploaded and all this stuff. Oh, wait, do I get to beat the game? Do I get to beat the game? <laughs> Thank you so much. There it is. You fool. <laughs> You've given me enough power to transform. <laughs> I will rule this world. Oh my god, it's very VHS. Like the horror series VHS. Oh my god, this brings me back to my childhood. So many games I played were like this. But yeah, like these are like tiny little details. They can easily be tuned up. Oh, dude. 
I just can't believe the sheer amount of art assets that are creatable via Polycam. I put this tape in, it'll end the game. Oh, I see. I was supposed to pick up the keys, open this up. Then I was supposed to go through to the back side. I got it. All right, I, I want to go to the fire area, man. Dude, it's actually kind of funny. I get completely absorbed by uh, exploration. I just want to see all the little nooks and crannies. All right, so I need 50 of these before I go through here. Great. Reminds me of uh, Banjo-Kazooie. All right. Isn't that a great soundtrack? Try again. All right. Or maybe I, I fully sequence broke it. I love having the devs in the chat here. All right, hold on. I'm going to get to 52. Ah! Ah! Oh, I know this problem. Yeah, if you have a camera that's sitting behind the player, there is a ton of tech that's needed to make sure that it sticks behind the player. When you do things like move the camera down, see how it like pulls in a little closer? And when you have something like this, figuring out how to make that translucent or pop in and out. I'm being rained on. Simple and evocative. Look at this. Oh, dude. Okay, I have I have interrupted myself about 70 times. But I really wanted to wander into this area. See what was over here. As I want to throw all the bantas. So I see. So this is like the final platforming challenge to let me get to the other side where I see the other key. Oh god. <laughs> oh you silly little goon. All right. So All right. So I want to I, I want to talk about the reason why we were excited about the rise of the machines topic. If you look at the history of technology as it is related just to games themselves, improvements in tech don't make games suddenly become good, but it does allow people to iterate and to make things quicker. Very simple you example. Get those tapes. You can download Unreal, you can download Unity, and you can just have physics and have a renderer, have those things. This allows you to be able to get started making the game way sooner, as opposed to needing to make your own physics engine, make your own rendering engine, make your own art uh, import pipeline or whatever. But it doesn't make the game great. Now, if we're talking like super realistic, you're in the real world. I have a key. Oh, that's that's just some that's just good lighting. That's just good lighting right there. If you're in the world. Um, uh, the real world and you're trying to like get funding and this sort of thing it can often be very difficult to communicate what's in your head this is the sort of thing that if you said I want to make a surreal exploration game and you cobbled this together and said yeah we spent a few days using this polycam technique to very swiftly make the art assets and put them in this is a really easy way to communicate that and similarly, they could say, yeah, can you just, like, polish this up a bit? And then you, you know, repair some bugs. You make the movement controller feel a little uh, more connected to the animation. Open up. Hell yeah. And I feel like what would happen is that you'd allow someone to get it way faster. And you'd say something like, yeah, you see how this was like a 20-minute experience? All you have to do is put the tape into the player. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, it's 20 minutes, but we want to add like 15 more levels like this. Finally. Thank you. You got Thank it. Thank you. 
Ooh, a nice little camera grab. Feel the power seeping through my veins, James. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> ah! Guys, this, this will look jank. It's supposed to play at the end. May the gods smile upon you. Oh, look at that! All right, did I break it? Is this the game? Is this the game? This is the game? All right, wait, wait, wait. I need to wait. Press menu. Yeah, it looks like I fully broke it. Now, if you want to actually figure out what happens. <laughs> All right, phew. Ooh. Oh. Oh my god, dog. Or perhaps that's Do9 TV. Oh, and there's more things that I haven't seen. Oh, and there's these different tapes in here. Okay, okay, okay. Now, because we got some of the tapes unlocked, I want to just dangle in front of you. Look, there's two more that are not unlocked. Those have big old key things by them. So, if you want to figure out... What happens, you can download and play this game yourself. Again, if you go to the DK30 Fall Game Jam Itch.io, you too can play Elemental the game. But again, I, I am absolutely tickled at how effective this was done. I mean, look at this. Programming, programming, sort of 3D renders, creative direction, soundtrack, soundtrack beats and music videos like there's one person self-labeled as an artist all those art assets were generated uh with polycam and assembled in a way that worked with the kind of drippy melty look of scanned images i mean, it's just incredible this is the sort of thing that makes me excited for game dev in the next 10 years oh, this is just fantastic okay the very next game in our Rise of the Machines game jam. I hope all of you like black text on a bright white background. This is a puzzle game where we program our little robot buddy. And uh, shout out to Lurkin, Double Helix Chicken Extreme, New Age Cross, Vampire FE, and Kenotu. Um, some of the audio does not work with mine here. So if any of you, yeah, let me get off the screen. If any of you who worked on this particular game could help debug, or maybe I'm just not running the game properly, or maybe it's connected to Sandboxy or something like this. Let's see. Rise of the Machines. I'd be thrilled, thrilled to hear some of this audio, music, and sound effectage. Rise of the Machines. Who's ready for the story, huh? Who's ready for the, for the story? This is a different take on Rise of the Machines. I'll be the audio one. Beep, boop, beep. CPU's okay. RAM's okay. Storage is all right. Oh, the servo system and the sensors have failed. Devastating. Whoa, what time is this? We're going to import a whole bunch of stuff. Time is, well, someone needs to restart their computer. All right. This is for robot cleaner. Model DK30V9. Ah, very cute. Very cute. Purpose. Serve humans by cleaning up. Wonderful. I, I like that the stakes are low. We just need to clean up. I guess I should get to work. Oh, no. My sensors. System damaged. System partially damaged. Ah. Uh, reach upgrade modules. They should have the necessary components to fix some of the damaged systems. Let's do this. Now, I did some of the very first ones. Use the buttons on the right side of the screen to give me instructions. Then click run code button to execute them. Reach the upgrade module. So, this is the sort of thing... Oh, what did I just knock over? Oh, I knocked over my phone. Oh my god. Guys, guys, something unplugged from your USB. Something unplugged there. Let me plug that back in for you. There you go. <laughs> so, this is the kind of thing that in terms of UI, UX, and presentation and stuff like this, there's lots of like, oh, this, this current code, it's like black text. It's like hard to read right here. There's a lot of extra white space. But look at this. See, I need my little guy to reach there. So I'm going to give him this command. 
to move forward. And then I run my code. Move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we're getting some complexity. We're getting some complexity. All right. Strafe left function repaired. Strafe right function repaired. Success. Great. Let's keep going. So, look at this. I can move forward. I can strafe left. And th there is a small touch here that I feel like is the perfect example of simple art to communicate for now that you'd replace later, but for now is great. Which direction is my little guy facing? Oh, let's just put a little yellow arrow. So this means he'll go up and then he'll go left. Up, left, up, left, up, left, up, left. Great. Run code. Forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left. Yeah. All right. Turn left function repaired. Turn right function repaired. Perfect. Most of my service system's functionality seems to have returned. So how do I get here? How do I get here? Well, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, or, or I should say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I only have six slots. So this is where if I say go forward one, two, three, four, it's actually going to loop through this. One, two, three. Whoops. Oh, I'm so bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to hit his little head. All right, this needs to be a move forward. That needs to be a turn left. All right, one, two, three, four, ugh. One, two, three, four, ugh. One, two, three. Like, this is the kind of thing. I want to have so many of these little guys. Oh, my God. Oh, I was just trying to clean up. Now there's high radiation levels detected in proximity. My internals are not shielded against radiation. All right, calculate safety radiation. Fatal exposure time. Oh, just under pi seconds. That's great. All right, so... So if I say just move... What, what's this mean? This means wait. Oh, so if I... Oh, no. You can see my health taking massive damage. So if I make this wait, because this will go wait, 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 and then maybe move forward, move forward, wait, wait, wait. Maybe it's actually four waits and then a move forward. So let's go wait, 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 move, move, wait. All right, so that was not quite it. All right, so let me stop because my little guy is going to die. So I actually think it was that this is moved forward and this is just cleared. Two, three, wait, wait. One, two, three, go, go. Oh, my God. Oh, I feel like such a programmer. Oh, my God. TFX is I love this so much. I know. I know. This is as far as I got. This is as far as I got was to that last level. And there's 17 levels. Finally, I can actually fulfill the primary purpose of my existence, cleaning. <laughs> All right, primary purpose enabled. Secondary purpose only available if primary purpose is fulfilled. Use clean function while standing on top of a dirt tile to remove it. Upgrade will only be available once all the dirt is removed. Ah, I see. So I need to like move, clean, turn, move, clean, turn, move, clean, turn. Okay, so if I go like move forward and then I want to clean and then I want to like strafe right and then I want to clean forward clean strafe clean forward clean strafe clean let's do this forward clean strafe clean forward clean oh my god yes yes hell yeah can't see the health bar I'm pretty sure no no, no. The, the the robots health is day nine TV <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's more cleaning to do. Huh. So I need to go like clean. Move. Okay, so let's actually do it like this. We go clean and then we move forward. And then we clean. And then we go forward. And then we go forward. And then we're going to turn right. 
Then we back up one, back up one, back up one. So this, this should do it. This should do it. Clean, move, clean, move, move, rotate, back up, back up, back up, clean, move, clean, move, move, rotate, back up, back up, back up. Dude, this is so good. This is so good. Oh, yeah. Clean, clean. Dude, my mind, my mind cannot not solve it instantly. All right. Sensors are working again. Excellent. All right, dude, this is so good. Having a climactic. At least now it's going to be easier to map my path. Your function detects objects directly in front of you. Set the object you are looking for in the code block next to if statements. Don't forget to end the statement with an end code block. If wall strafe right. Oh. So we say if there if I if I see a wall, turn right, and then we end that. So then we just move forward, right? Because we're moving forward, but if we see this, yeah, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward. All right. Whoop. Oh, my God. Dude, I love this so much. So very much. I love these little programmatic games. And I know Factorio and things like that are, like, way crazy. And it's actually pretty simple in terms of, like, understanding it. Oh, where's the challenge level? Ow, you asshole. God, my cat bit the crap out of me. All right, so uh, first thing, we want to check. So if I am, when danger is ahead, when dirt consumable or toggle is ahead. So if we see dirt ahead, we want to, move on to it and clean, right? So we move on to it and clean. And then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make this guy rotate. So he has a single rotation. Let's see here. But the problem is, if he gets here, so the thing is, if he goes here and he cleans, we're not we're not quite done yet, because th this will almost work. Is this the animation speed? Yeah. See, like he'll do this shit. How far ahead do the sensors check? It looks like one. He'll get here and he'll spin forever. Once he gets here, there's no more dirt and he just it just spins forever. Let me let me see if there's if I can see the or exit is ahead. Ah, great. Never mind. So th this will work. Can we make it go any faster? Can we make it go any faster? So like... So this is this is a way to speed it up. We can, th so this will work, but he'll clear, do a 360, clear, do a 360. So we can then say, if you see nothing ahead, then we want you to do a little rotation.
Look at him go. Look at our little guy go. Plurimonte says, do you have an L statement? Let me tell you. True quality code just doesn't use else statements. You just have ifs with failures. Much better this way. <laughs> Look at my little guy go. I'm so proud. Oh my god. Burp. Dude, this feels this feels unbelievable. I've dragged the animation slider as, as fast as possible. Very much so hope he was sarcastic. Well, there's actually a design pattern that you can do, which is like um Often it's easy to have, well, if you know, let's say you're trying to process a piece of data. Nice. Hell yes. Let's say you have a piece of data that has like 17 different fields, and in, if there's data missing in each field, you want to do a certain thing. Um, it's easy to be like, if it has this, then we continue. And if it also has this, and if it also has this to check the, the, the positives. And then this, you wind up with this really big nest of checks where in the middle of the nest is the, is the full success case. Whereas the better pattern is, let's say you have a function which is to print the product information, has 17 fields. The last thing you do is you just do the expected case. And then you check for the negations. If it doesn't have this, throw this error. If it doesn't have the second thing, throw an error. And then all of a sudden you don't have any nested if then else statements. It's, it's, it's completely flat. All right, what, what is this stuff? Oh, so we're going to move forward. Yeah, Baba is logic. So it needs to turn left, right, left, right, right. Well, this is tricky. So basically, we start by moving forward. And then if we see any danger ahead, we want to turn right. So we can go right here, left, right, 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 left right left and left is the issue here but he'll just turn 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 and come back this way and then this is the problem because he hits here he needs to go right so i think we need to nest these things which i don't want to do yeah because he's going to be coming straight here and he's going to see this and oh no this this was water turn right yeah 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 and then we say if if you see a wall, turn left. This is this this will do it. Yeah, if if we see if we see the danger, we go right. Now obviously I want the animation speed a little faster. And then this is where it goes left, but that's okay because we have a little hole here. Move the animation slider to the other end. Oh. Oh! All right. All right. Okay. Less is more here. Less is more. I can do loops. Loop function repeat the enclosing scope. All right. This is the last one. This is the last one. All right, all right. This is going to be the last one that we do. So loop.
All right, so. Oh my God. So how, how, how does this logically want me to loop? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, Hey, if, if I can, if I see dirt ahead, so this is loop while, Oh, I see. While I if I while I see dirt ahead, we always go forward. And this is this is this is not just dirt. This is dirt consumable toggle or exit. We go forward and we clean that shit. And that that's the end of the loop. So if we see it, we move forward, move forward. But here when it's done. Let me see here. Let me see here. So this will make it go up to here. If I go forward, right, right, forward, right, right, forward, right, right. This is the tricky part, because right now he'll just go here forever. And if I go, if I go like forward and then I go strafe right and then I go strafe right. Yeah. So I think I think I need to make him turn. This is this is tricky because I I clearly want to like get him here and then kind of move up here and then move to the right. Actually, if you turn right. Or probably should strafe, clean, strafe, strafe, move forward, clean, strafe, strafe, move forward, clean, strafe, strafe, move forward, clean, strafe, strafe. So, how do I get him to fucking turn around here? Oh my god, it's so tricky. Oh. And then I clear this because right now, right now if I run this, he'll go and he'll just keep strafing, right? Because this this always executes. And then if you see a wall, I just want to do this. I want to see what happens here. Actually, if I close this, what happens? Huh. So if I like do this, <laughs> I think I I feel like the game needs to make me wait a little bit. I actually think it should be rotate here. Oh, 
Oh, this is tricky. I, I genuinely want to try to figure this one out. Because I'm pretty sure this loop is correct, right? Because if my guy is here, then he will see this. And then he will go clean, move forward, clean, move forward, clean, move forward, clean, move forward, thing, move forward. Right? So what happens if I see an empty square? What's the difference between cleaning in the loop and outside of it? Um, I mean, all right, here's here's where I'm at. Someone help me with the solution. Someone just help me with the solution. The difference between cleaning the loop and outside of it is that it's looped. I, I don't actually know how to explain it outside of that. Because I'm also working on the assumption that I need to have this thing, at, like I need the end here. Put strafe twice in the loop. Like this. Because this, this will get us to here. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh my god. Backwards and clean. I forgot I could go fucking backwards and clean. Oh, that's so good. Wait, so if I if I hit this hotkey. Yeah. Oh shit. Cause it if you see this, you do this little loop. And if you see this, you do this little loop. And then, and then the, the, the insight is that this is a little L move here. So when you get to this, you do everything but the last chunk of the moving forward, and then you just back your way through. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's so great. All right, I'm closing this. And once again, big shout out to Lurkin, Double Helix, Chicken Extreme, New Age Cross, Vampire Effie, Kinotu. Yes. Yes. Hello. Oh. All right. Next game in our Rise of the Machines. Oh, yeah, this is... All right. Uh, Desperado, excuse me. Excuse me. All right. Uh, hey. The Naya says, just turn. Uh, goes back into the loop then. Uh, I would need to see the entire thing, because with the loop that I was using, you'd actually strafe over one of them. Anyways, the robot factory you work in, control plus, 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 the robot factory you work in is, work at, is out of control and can't stop creating giant killer robots as a factory worker. It's your job to stop this madness by programming some safety protocols into the creation process while avoiding the robot's tax. But hurry, there's a limited amount of time before there are more uh, created and the robots take over. Activate terminals as you dodge all the hazards to unlock and reach the exit. For an extra challenge, try hard mode for 50% reduced health. WASD, move, space, jump, hell yeah. All right, where, where's my sandboxy? Run, run program. All right, and I have the rise of, there's rise of the tower. Rabario, here we go. Make control Z here. Shout out to Bruce Asby, excuse me, Ash B on the music sound effects. Seapor7 on coding. Fengraf, the generalist. Joed on programming and Salax on game design. Coming in. Here we go. Begin. Oh, wait, hold on. Exit. First of all, very dramatic background imagery. Full on dystopia. Oh, yeah. Let me turn, turn this puppy down. All right. Team Bender. Here's everyone that I just said, but look at the typeface with their, with their names. Look at all the smudge. All right. Time to play Robario. 
All right, so here we go. You can see that I'm not Mario in the bottom left. I'm Robario. So this laser will hurt me. So I need a jump to dodge. All right, so I need to jump across to this thing now. Ugh. So you'll see this little gear icon appearing here. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. It opens up, and this little laser here just opened. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god, they, they, ha they have different- they have different timings! This game is mean! This is insanely hard! They have different timings for when they shoot. Oh my god, that's so difficult. It's open, get me out of here! Holy shit. I- I don't see where my health is on the screen. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus! Alright, so here's- here's where I need to get to. Can I use can I use the my right hand with this? Alright, okay, hold on. Vlog game 2.0. Alright, can't quite get up there. Fuck. Alright. This is this is this is tense. Alright, maybe I do want to do this left-handed. Or maybe I want this. Yeah, I think this is I think this is the one where I use my right hand on the space bar. Alright, I'm just eating it. This music is badass, man. Look at me. Robario, jump! Jump! Crouch. Jump. I'm just kidding. There's no crouch button. Okay, so where... Oh, oh, I have to go through this middle part. Holy shit, this little saw? Is this, this fucking saw gonna follow me? Ow. Jesus. Holy shit, that's so hard. Oh my god. Oh my god, doesn't he let me resume? Isn't that cruel? It has resumed grayed out. Alright, let's begin again. Alright, I, I can do this. I can do this. Oh, the health bar? Is, the, is, it, is it this giant red thing in the top right? Alright, here we go. Fucking <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's fucking so hard. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, hold on. Let let the saw blades go. Alright, I, I, I ate that shit. Dude, there are no iframes in this game at all. We created the game, game jam topic, Rise of the Machines, and someone's like, you know what? I, I hate Day 9. I want him to suffer. Oh, shit! Oh, these fucking saws. Jesus. Holy shit, these saws. Oh my god, did you see them? They like absolutely did a little bullshit move. Holy shit, I am gonna keep playing this. I don't even believe that was the hardest thing I've ever seen. And I think that many of you love to see when I suffer, huh? Fucking hell. Fuck. Oh my god. Someone, like, this is insane. Alright, whatever. <laughs> Angelina Jolie controlling those saws. I know, these are the saws from the movie Wanted. Starring Angelina Jolie. Fuck. 
Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. Ah, oh, shit. Go, 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 go. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. All right. I'm going to play again. You know, I, I will say I have not made any comments about development and cleverness and quality of game at all. All I've done is be engaged while suffering, which is perhaps the greatest compliment that one can be given. Fuck, there's no iframes in this game. All right, that was not that was not bad. Here's the only way to get through this part is you just eat the you eat the sauce. But I will say, I, I am quite a big fan of this zoomed back look. I like seeing a lot of the level. It's kind of fun to maneuver around it. Ah, Jesus, that's such garbage. All right, so how do I do this? What? What? What are we doing? We literally fucking kidding me! Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god! Oh my... Legitimately, oh my god. What it, what it, who made this game? Oh my god! Oh my god. Alright, well... Oh god! Oh my... Oh my god! I know the solution though. I'm gonna solve it. I've solved it. I've solved it in my mind. All right, so here we go. We're gonna hit the begin button. Dude, like like brutal platformers. It's almost like the way that horror movies work. Like horror movies don't necessarily need to have as high of a budget or even need to have an ending that resolves. You know, there's like a, it's kind of one of those like film school things where they're like, look, if you're looking to just make a, a, a quick project, it, it's very easy to make some cheap horror, right? Like the bang for the proverbial buck is high. And that's not to say that you you cannot make or that any horror movie could be made inexpensively or some nonsense like that. But rather, it's the idea of, yeah, if you're looking to just like make something that is effective for your dollar spend, horror is a good one to choose. And I feel like brutal, brutal platformers is that for games? Oh, it just fucking seeks onto me. All right, okay, I, I know how to solve this part. I know how to solve this, watch. See, I just, I just eat it, I just eat the sauce. Oh, holy shit, this fucking laser, dude. Get me the fuck out of here. Oh, I won! All right, now I'm actually gonna step back in and appreciate this this game. Like, um, here's something that I actually like quite a bit, which is this game is an ultra challenging, brutal platformer, right? Super classic. Uh, it's kind of like uh, reimagining some of the games that you played as a kid as being deliberately difficult instead of incidentally difficult. So, but by saying, hey, these robots have come to life, it kind of gives you permission to do some more AI-driven behaviors with traditional obstacles. Like, the, the turret that tracks you is pretty basic, but like... Then when you start to have saws that follow you around, it's really nice. I would love to make a game like this one day. I would love to make a game like this one day. Hard mode, 
you start with 50% health. That, that, that's what happens. 50% health. This reminds me of that old Flash game N. An N+. Plus. I literally don't know how the fuck you're supposed to get around this. Like that, apparently. Oh my god, we're done. That's it. Kill me. Robario, indeed. Shout out to Team Robario for, uh, you know, giving me a little bit of adrenaline in the in the morning. Alright, our next game jam game. There we go. Rise of the Tower. Now, I'm going to actually open this up again. This one was made in Godot. Run program. Browse. Rise of the Tower. Okay, open up. There we go. Yeah, listen to that. Dwar, dwar. Wah, wah. Do, 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 do. So, credits Toon Hawk for our design, Tantalus, music and sound effects, Get Creative, programming and design. Hell yeah. So, left click is select, right click is shoot, and then I aim with the mouse. All right. Ooh, I love that whirr. So, y'all remember games like this? Dude, look, look, look at the light. Oh my god, yeah. And I have these different abilities. I can do like a little, a little bomb. I also have this mega laser here. All right. Oh, oh. Dude, the simple act of like aiming in a trajectory like this is so fun. Oh, shit. Can I do this? Oh, hell yeah. Quick, use this. All right, get those Luigi clones. These are not Luigi clones, these are brave soldiers. Dude, look at my headshots. Shot him right in his gun. Dude, why don't they make more games like this? These kinds of games are so fun. See, I love that this is Rise of the Machines, and in this, I'm the machine. I'm the machine. Click, 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 click. Go, go, go. No, don't shoot me. Oh, it's shooting me with a gun. Soldiers look straight out of Rabaria. Oh, we need this. Oh, that's very satisfying. Mm hmm. I love the light effects so much. Oh, these guys are they're they're getting numerous. Oh shit. How long do you think I can go, huh? Oh shit, it's a tank. It's a tank. We got tanks. No, he's shooting me! Ah! Uh. And also, this one was made in Godot. Dude, like, I absolutely adore the feeling of how this... This turret feels. I mean, oh, God! Oh, God. Like, like the, the little glowing ball. And this always struck me as the perfect style of game to just keep adding to. 
like if they were like, hey, we've added a whole bunch more. Oh shit. Oh my god. Hold on. I'm, I'm not gonna finish my thought. People are making action games these days. Oh hell yeah. Uh oh. Mr. Fackman says I would play this for hours. Yes, yes. And what's kind of fun about this is that this is a, this is a, a like a, an inverted take on the rise of the machines. We're the mach machine here, man. Oh God, shoot, shoot. Oh my god, I'm at... Oh, I've lost so much health. New vampire survivors, let's go. Hell yeah, Refi. AoE. Dude, there's so many Luigi's coming. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Dude, yeah, no, the, the parabolic trajectory is so fun. All right, so we're gonna... Ah! Like, missing is actually funny. Oh! Fuck. Damn it! But yeah, no, like, the, there's... If I just look at these four games... Quit to main menu. Quit. And I come back to the Rise of the Machines game jam. Like, the four games we looked at, we had Elemental that used this incredible polycam tech to load in all these assets, showcasing the theme through the technology they used. Then we saw the literal Rise of the Machines game project, where you control the robot they cleaned, that was like my favorite kind of puzzle game. These little programmatic puzzle games. We had Robario, which if you're in the mood for some pain, <laughs> check out. Uh, kind of melding the ultra try-hard punishing platformer with our robot Rise of the Machine theme. And then like Rise of the Tower that was like a narrative take on this. Because there's one thing about like the game that everyone always uses nowadays to talk about embodiment is like the most recent Spider-Man game on PS5 where you really feel like you're Spider-Man because you're like slinging webs and swinging between buildings and you're like running up the side of buildings. It's really fun. You feel like that's what you are. Or if there was a game where there was a dragon and you got to play as the dragon, think of all the mechanics and characterizations um, and uh, uh, tools and upgrades you'd be able to do as a dragon. You'd be able to fly and breathe fire and, you know, maybe you'd get stone scales and, st and stuff like this. Like, if you get a narrative that you can commit to, it starts to be able to create mechanics, which is a little different than a sort of top-down approach, which is like, what are the mechanics that we want the player to have? Okay, what's the narrative that would present those most cleanly? And I like this Rise of the Tower and Robario games as being examples of taking the narrative of you, you know, the rise of the machines. You are the machine and there's humans trying to stop you. And that just seems like really clearly and cleanly extensible. And we have one more game that was from Rye Games, which is images and flavor text made with machine learning and some minor edits. You can only walk around. Rye Games has been in some of our past. And I want to check this out. But I love how just like wildly different each of these is. Oh my God, you're at the spaceport. Exits are east, west, north, and south. So I stepped off the spaceship, I wondered, let me do this. I wonder if my mission would be a success. I'd been selected as one of the planetary specialists, trained to go to other planets and figure out how they worked. So I assume that this is the map. All right, let's go. Go east. What? You arrive at the East Alley. There's a light shining down the alley. Come on, someone says. No, it's a dead end. Someone else says. Dude, so these are all AI-generated images. Uh, let me say, uh, talk to stranger, or is it just only... 
Oh, north, south, east, west. Let's go east. Dude. You arrive at the street market. There are many people in shops. Let's just go this way, you say, and walk around the market for a while. This is unbelievable. You're in the cafe. There's a man sitting at the table smoking a cigarette. I could live here, you say. Yeah, this place is great, the man says. So all the text is AI generated as well. I'm going to keep going east. Can't go that way. So. so I need to go west to exit. Let's go north. You enter a restaurant. There are many tables with chairs around. It's really crowded in here, you say. But it's a good crowd, someone else says. You have a map? Yeah, yeah, the map is in the corner. Jesus. You walk over to the bar and look at all the people inside. There are several people sitting at tables as well as a few standing at the bar. There are a few empty seats at the tables. Are these scenes dynamically generated? My understanding, Toast Bones, is that our creator made pre-made images by using AI art. Like going to an AI art generator and saying, a man looks out the window of a, you know, a cheap bar at the enormous cityscape. Boom, it generates that. I mean, this is kind of hilarious. You're at the sea of dancing. You see all the people of the city dancing and having a great time. You watch as they sway to the music and feel your heart move in time with the music. You're at the rave. Yeah, like, a lot of AI art struggles with uh, boundaries so uh, and, like, subtle detail. So, for instance, you can see that a lot of these people are sort of blending into each other. But if you just, like, kind of look away and then, like, glance and look, it just reads like a rave. I think I can't go any farther this way. Oh, my God. Also, AIs currently really suck at making letters. Like, really, really bad. Yeah, look, it's 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 death set to... <laughs> oh my god, I want to live in this. You're at the casino. Oh yeah, here's the cafe. You're at the park. Jesus, this is incredible. You're right at the park. There are lots of people walking around. There's a fountain playing in the center of the park. It's so pretty, you say. It's not real. Oh, this is unbelievable. You're at the forest party. <laughs> Beyond the forest. All right, let me, let me go west a little bit. The deep forest. Yeah, because, like, so the author... You're the desert vegetation. Okay, so so the author is doing what I think is the example of what excites me about AI art and AI generation. The AI is generating under specific direction from Rai Games. So the creator had to say, okay, if you go east, this is where the deep forest is. And then here is beyond the forest, right? And then, you know, so there's vegetation to the south. And then in the top right, there's like casinos and bars and restaurants. But like when you've done that, yeah, look at this. We're in the desert now. Pillar of light. Ooh. But this allows for a certain speed of creation. Oh my god, this is incredible. Wow, this is insane. I love the art transitions too. You're at the city outskirts. Where's the west city edge? Oh my god, all this imagery is fucking incredible. 
Again, if any of you are interested to check this out, you can look up Rye Games Walking Simulator. All right, and with that, whoo! With that, I am going to say that will conclude the investigation of our Fall DK30 Game Jam games. Our Fall DK30 Game Jam games. So fun to see the incredible creativity of all of you. Now, one of the things that uh, I want to remind everybody here of is this Game Jam wasn't the only thing going on with DK30. DK30, again, is about everyone having their own personal goals that they're trying to make progress on. Um, uh, uh. And so, there's other projects that people worked on all by themselves or sometimes in small teams, some that had to do with games, some that didn't at all. If you worked on a DK30 and want to showcase it here on air, drop a link in chat right now. Drop me that link. I would love to take a look at it. So some of those that we want to take a brief look at before I wrap and go off to the airport. SeaTac published Vampire Survivors game to itch.io. This process to learn the process of publishing a game to itch.io. Usually when it comes to development, I get caught in a rabbit hole, how to make my own music, sound effects. Oh yeah, all these things. The goal of this project is to avoid all of that and just make something that gets put on itch.io. As such, I'll use a simplified game loop inspired by Vampire Survivors for the game's design. Honestly, if any game development gets tough, just stop doing it and publish the broken game. Love it. And this is actually something that I think is really important when it comes to like professional creative development. If you say, listed off all the things that could make a book good, the things that could just make a book good, could be, some of it could be prose or the characterizations or the dialogues or the settings or the action sequence or the uh, imagery that is written in there. And we could list off more and more and more and more and more nuanced, subtle things. And the fact is you don't actually have to nail all of these to have a successful book. If there's 50 properties, you need to nail like seven. <laughs> and just because you nail those seven doesn't mean that if you have, eh, if you have mediocre dialogue, it doesn't make the mediocre dialogue any less mediocre. You could obviously look at that and improve it like crazy. But at some point, you got to publish a book because you got to release something because you got to eat if you're an author. When it comes to games, yeah, like you could you could make really interesting particle effects. You could figure out how to make your own music and be like concerned ape. You could sit there dwelling on different mechanics and go, ooh, this has already been tried and true and all this sort of stuff. And I love this push to just release. The project was a huge success. I learned a ton about publishing. And... uh in addition, I met my goals for the days I set to work on a project. I learned a ton about Bevy and Rust, which I assume you mean are the um, <laughs> chemical processes that happen to iron. Uh, and all in all, I'm impressed making something work over trying to figure out the entire design space and tech stack. I'm really happy with how the project went and the actual end game. While simple, is more than I expected I would finish. Dude, look at this. Hell yeah. Look at this. Very recognizable vampire survivory things. And look at all these incredible update notes from Citek. I mean, this is this is fantastic. Closing this one out. Bread Machine audio and composition from our very own collision. Game audio involves unique challenges whilst providing some of the key components of the experience of the game. However, I know neither what those challenges are, nor just how much one can add to a game through audio music. The project will attempt to create a track for each of three interaction modes in the simplest representative game I can come up with, and implement them in a game. Through this, explore both the challenges and rewards of game audio. This is another amazing example of how to constrain a problem to be able to push into stuff. Uh, you know, hey, I'm just going to make a game, I'll copy something, and then I'll try to put some audio into it. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of these tools that are being used here. Brilliant. Hey, final wrap-up video. Now, I, 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 have a, I, have a, I have a question for you. Let me adjust my audio here. All right, I got you. Collision, I got you. There you are. Should, like, should we move to some of the game stuff right here? Look, we got, we got some precursor stuff. Is it all right to skip here? Is it all right to skip here, Justin? Can we do this? Can we go right here? I want to see this. 
All right, here we go. Sure, start with the game. All right, I can't wait. Ah, yes. Story concept is that of technology gone wrong, but also play on words in DK30s. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Many controls will be shown on screen. Oh my god, I hear the little alchemical vials. Oh, look at this lightning flash. Oh, sick. Oh my god, this is so clever. Oh my god, it's in my left ear, bud. Or your left, my right. Oh my god, this is so clever. Quick mood sketches and the audio to really communicate. Did you do the musical composition as well? Fuck, you're so talented! Oh my god. Yeah, no, that's... Super clever. Oh my god. Oh yeah. Do this now. So Collision said this project was actually an all game audio project. Where's my audio mixer? There we go. Yeah, like, so... I think it's so clever the way in which you were doing different forms of gray boxing. Like, this is literal gray boxing. This is what I was talking about previously with gray boxing, for any of you who are curious. But then also the sort of wireframe storyboarded stuff in the previous it was so good. This is a lot like the music I listen to. Oh my god, yes. Oh, I mean this is this is so clever. Oh, that is so sick. Oh my god, yeah. I mean the uh <laughs> very Apex twin. Hell yeah. Yeah, no, I think that that is absolutely brilliant that when it comes to just show to focusing on a certain skill, minimizing all the work of everything else. Yeah, Drew Dog. I I already did it. Um, it, it's so clever the way that you're minimizing everything else to be able to focus on the thing that you actually really care about. I mean, that's just terrific. I mean, that's just brilliant. It's on itch as well. Y'all have seen the extent of the gameplay. No, I want that. I want that to fill my ears because yeah, audio in games is one of those things that all game devs agree it's super duper duper important, and yet it's always thrown in at the last minute. Like, oh, we have to ship in nine months. Let's make an audio team. So it's like really cool to see what early pre type stuff might look like in that environment, since it's so easy to have stories of it being overlooked. Aurora Rose wanted to stream for 30 days. Oops. There's the bread machine. There we go. Aurora Rose. Look, I'll even refresh for you, Drew Dog, just to show you. I want to stream ideally every day, art or gaming, for at least an hour. Streaming for 30 days? That's a lot of streaming. That feeling of every day being on an endless countdown? But I think that if you stream every day for 30 days, and then went to like five days a week, like yours truly. That is like really great to build up just a habit. We got some art done on stream. Oh my God, is this? How is this made? Is this an actual like light render? This almost looks like if you put a 2D paper cutout in 3D. This reminds me so much of, like, the newest uh, Magic the Gathering style art. She's doing this all on her iPad. It's amazing. Oh, yo, dude, I really like this one. This is stylish. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, my God, yeah. Oh, dude, of course. 
lifting up the skirt and there's a galaxy spraying out of it. Unbelievable. Wait, I want to... Dude, this is such an interesting balance between abstraction and representation. I ended up streaming 28 out of 30 days. I'll be taking a break for a week, but then going back to my usual weekend streams. It's a lot of fun. I hope I can do something like it again. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about habits. We talk a lot also about like one-time tasks, like trying to clean the garage or clean the room. But I love this idea of like, no, I normally stream on the weekend. But you know what? This month, I want to really push and I want to do a extended, bigger version of something I already do. This is incredible. Oh, this is great. Oh, congrats and bravo, Aurora Rose. Bootleg Furiosa, learning Blender and making a Blender birthday cake for my DK 30th birthday. First of all, Bootleg Furiosa, happy birthday. I want to learn Blender so I can make references to aid my illustration. Basically, modern day maquette. I've been doing the famous donut tutorial, but I heard a rumor that's a little too complicated for beginners. We'll be doing a different tutorial first. I want to solidify what I'll be doing, uh, to what I'll learn by doing a simple project without a guide. Ooh, without a guide. All right, so we have some final wrap up. I, I'm always pleased to see this. I'm actually amazed at how much I was able to accomplish in 30 days. Yeah, let me tell you, if this is not you, no stress. We would generally assume that that is like, 20, 30% of projects in that range would be like, wow, I actually did more than I expected. Because often people, um, there's a mix of, uh, I think I'll get some done. Wow, I can get a lot done when I'm setting uh, aside time. But I think most people are in the camp of like, wow, I'm amazed that I was able to accomplish stuff even though I got sidetracked. Four to get 30, all I knew how to do was move the objects in the camera. Now I can't even sum up what I've learned. Yeah, hell yeah. All right. Yeah, why did I succeed at Mario Visual? Uh, you already have some of this background experience, but you wanted to learn this new tool set. No, no, this, this, this is kind of funny. This kind of reminds me of how I was talking about I have a lot of experience with a variety of different game engines. I just had never used Unreal, so I wanted to learn that. So I want to, I want to think, I want to see this. I'm finished. I'm 30. I absolutely love how the cake turned out. Ended up downloading some of the models from Blender Kit to stage the scene. And wait, here it comes. Who's ready to see a, a 3D rendered birthday cake? You're 30. Oh, and we got little pirates on there? Oh my god, yeah. How do I do this? Like that? Yeah. Look at this. Dude, look, look, look at it. It looks chocolatey. Oh, look at the sheen on this. I mean, this is this is a glassy, lustrous birthday cake. I would eat that shit. I also like the little bits of light on the candle. The little nice glow. This is cute as hell. This skeleton, I used to think skeletons are scary. And now I've learned that skeletons are cute. Mm, 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 mm. And you know, there's also like a really subtle bit here where if you've ever like seen cakes, like the outside boundary, they're not, it's not like literally a perfect cylinder. There's like little bits where there's a little extra chocolate there and you can see this nice little wave there. Mmm, I would eat these coins. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Bully Furiosa says the sides are historical pirate flags. Oh my God, right. Look at this. Ooh, yeah, and look at this light with a little bit of specularity in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Did you also do this uh, table? Like, I'm so curious. This is incredible. And as someone who's tr who you were trying to learn this software, I mean, that's amazing for just stepping into it. Hell yeah. Bravo, Bootleg Furiosa. Look at that. Edward Lowe left and Jack Rackham. Calico Jack on the right. Hey! Oh, this is nice. The cake and everything on it is mine. Everything else is Blender Kit for staging. Oh my god, that's incredible. Well, the best parts were yours. Happy 30th. Ha <laughs> ha Oh my god. They must excuse me. I have a service to finish writing for tomorrow. 
So I have to act as the only eulogy our boy DK30 will be given out here. And I intend it to sing. Let me tell you, The Terror is a great TV show. Terror is a great TV show. Other projects. In the non-game front, we got Satan, a.k.a. Serial GG, that had written 12 chapters, 42 to go. You know, just casual 50. Casual round 50. What is a realistic number of chapters for 30 days? I'm thinking 10. Yeah, you know, if if your chapters are like 30 divided by 10. Yeah, you're, you're doing um, 5 to 10 page. Maybe 5 to 20 page chapters. Serial GG says, I hated this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sadly, I cannot link to any of the progress, and so I want to keep that option open. That should this ever be publishable, publisher can have right first right publication. You'll just have to trust me. No, th this is actually, I think, really sensible when it comes to creative stuff. Like, there are plenty of times where for this DK30, where I didn't really show anything. Well, I mean, sometimes I didn't have anything to show. Like, when I was trying to just, like, try to... I tried to run 100 miles in a month. And then I was like, all right, I did it. <laughs> There's not much to say. Uh, but, um... When it comes to, hey, no, I'm interested in the process of being able to produce the writing, not necessarily, here is this piece of writing, what do you think? Because here's a piece of writing, what do you think? Someone could spend a year writing a great chapter. That's very different than someone who's trying to figure out the process for quickly producing chapters. All right, life is taken by the scruff of the neck and put me firmly in my place. I won't accept it forever, but I think for now, I should have to listen to my body and mind take a break. Call this project before finishing chapter 17, but I only want this to be a temporary respite from the stressing out I am doing to myself. As well, I'm going to reflect on the process as a whole. So I am really curious to read more of this stuff because I think that one of the things that um, we try to stress here is that things can go wrong. And I probably... I felt like I've done a solid job on like half my DK 30s. So I'm pretty comfortable because, you know, I'm used to trying and struggling and failing and everything in between. But I think that it's very easy to be in a position where, you know, maybe you're a viewer, you're interested in trying a DK 30 and you're feeling a little stressed and self judgmental. And we see so many amazing projects of people like, I did an amazing job. I'm so happy. Everything's great that I I'm really grateful for. Serial, where you're just like, dude, I just, I, I didn't like this. I didn't like my DK30 experience. Copy, paste, enter. Sean, click the link and share it with everyone. I think it's like really important for people to see that not everyone can just, you know, or let, let me try this again. If there's a thousand projects that are in DK30, the 10 absolute home runs of that thousand will often want to reach out to me and post and share which can make the other 990 people feel like maybe they did something wrong when the reality is about 800 out of those thousand are more in that realm of like, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of did something, but it wasn't that great. Like the vast majority are people not really getting to where they intended to go, but that are generally happy, you know, like for instance, with me, with my project, I didn't finish all the coding I wanted to do or any of it. But I did learn a ton more about the editor, and I'm feeling a lot more comfortable in the future. All right. I had come off the back of not working on it for six weeks, and I do poorly with breaks. This is a really hard thing to do when you lose some momentum. It's going to be difficult due to my inability to properly judge the quality of my own work. Classic. Uh, I had managed to get sleep schedule under control. I needed to keep it that way. Problems. I don't like editing. I suck at quality assurance. I suck at consistency. A tenuous relationship with sleep. My body, apparently. My 92-year-old grandmother will be around for the entire time and require care and attention. I love her, though. Ooh, yep. I've been a caretaker before. This consumes a crap load of time. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is great. I managed, I managed to be relatively consistent. Dude, relatively consistent is consistent. Relatively consistent is great. Oh, and for context, yes, yeah, Serial, uh, or excuse me, Satan shares, I wrote the original novel of 84,000 words in a DK30 before. This is just the editing of said novel. Yeah, yeah. And I think that this is a common pickle with any multi-dimensional task, you know, where, 
you know, there's there's the kind of person that likes building in carpentry, but doesn't like finishing and doing the last steps to actually make it look nicer and feel more usable. They like the construction process. Or, you know, this, I enjoy the writing process, but when I go through an edit, I don't like it because I want to be writing more. I have ideas. And as I'm reading this, I'm getting more ideas, you know, this sort of thing. And I think it's important not to be self-judgmental about that, that different things can require different amounts of effort for people. So for instance, one thing for me, I can go live and talk for like six to 10 hours and be fine. I, If you say to me, Sean, we have a pitch in the morning. You're pitching this thing you've never heard of and it'll be a two hour presentation. I'd be fine. I'd be absolutely A plus. But if you want me to like answer all my email on time, I'm terrible at that shit. I've gotten better over time. Uh, let me turn this off and turn this on uh, again real fast, Ghosty. So, like, if I get behind on my emails, it's incredibly easy for me to... Uh, it's incredibly easy for me to just, like, need to spend, like, four hours responding to three emails. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. So... I want to stress that I think that it is absolutely fine if you are someone who says, okay, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to spend two months writing it and then 10 months editing it because that's that's the pace. That's the pace that I got. See, so issues need a lot more time to build up for a session of editing. And I'm easily distractible if I start too late in the day. Now that I know this, however, I know that if I want to do this consistently, I have to, I have to change my lifestyle. Great. Don't backtrack. And this is very tempting to try to go back and work on the same thing over and over again to let my perfectionism take the wheel. This is deadly for my productivity really hard to do because if you're writing and you have written 10 pages of a 20 page chapter you your brain will go i'm halfway done and editing is just not that linear <laughs> uh knowing i can honestly the longer i work on this project the more i'm realizing it might be achievable i might be able to actually complete this eventually while not losing steam yeah and i mean i i think that this is why creative groups are so helpful where, I mean, I'm more familiar with game dev than with writing, so I'm going to use an example there, where, like, um, you know, there is a platformer that I worked on in grad school. And this platformer, I spent, like, two days really tuning the movement. And I coded up a ton of really just quality of life nice things that just felt freaking great. Oh, that's awesome. And then making the level was just exhausting. Like literally making level content, I just find unbelievably tiring. And I have friends that they're like, oh yeah, cool system. Yeah, I could make like 40 levels for it, like but in, but in 20 minutes. They can just like churn it out and I just can't. I'm like really bad at that. But I know that if I just sat down and slowly chugged through it, no reader cares how hard the editing process was. No gamer cares how difficult the level creation process was for me. If it's good, it's good. And they're just like, great. There you go. Oh, my God. Not only did I learn a couple things, there's a few more things that ruin the end of my project. That's just life. I need to try not to be as depressed over it as I am. I had to get surgery once for something relatively benign then found out that the issue I've been having with not being able to breathe through my nose can only be resolved through surgery. So I had to reschedule that and work through that. Medical things always put me way down. Dude, yeah. Yeah. You, you're doing great. You're doing great. And I think the important thing is as much as this ceremony of DK30 can be helpful. It's fall DK30. Let's all get ready. Let's get motivated. Because it has an end date, it's so easy to use it as a means to beat yourself up. Oh, I failed. I failed DK30. Oh. And I think that we need to talk a little more about that here with this project. Where when you're done with DK30, a follow-up case is, hey, what do you want to do the next month to follow up on this DK30? Because, you know what I like to do? I like to schedule a light December because I'm wrapping everything up and I'm getting ready to go on break. And then I think about some things I want to do for January. So for me, my little arc is like fall DK30 stuff, light break, Round two of whatever my fall DK30 was. And I really like that. 
I really like that. So you did not fail. You were learning a bunch of stuff. And just keep at it. I know you're going to get through this, Serial Gigi. I know you're going to get through it. Because let me tell you, the goal is not to avoid the suffering or avoid the pain. The goal is just to get it done. And most people just don't get it done. And if you're like, oh, maybe I'm one of those people, you're clearly not. You're doing it. You got this shit. Harris says, complete a new digital illustration. I've been taking some digital painting classes and want to practice what I've learned. I'll set aside time throughout the week to work on a new character and scene illustration. Oh my God. Wait, oh, oh, oh. Done. Still have some small details I want to add, but I need a break before I can tackle those. I'm sure there are also mistakes that I just can't see right now because I've been looking at it for so long. Super happy with how this came out, but I know it can be even better if I take a break and come back. Yeah, was it Stephen King talks about putting creative works in the oven? where he'll write something and just put it in a drawer and ignore it and then switch and write something else and then come back to the drawer and look at it. All right. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, da. Yo, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. First of all, I love the environmental style and the control and the color palette. I mean, that is really nice. We're going to do one uh, copy image address. Do this, 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 this. You know, I think I feel like there's the sort of the, the desert serpent is underexplored in terms of my love of dragons. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll get the traditional dragon way up in the mountains. Various dragons of fire and ice. Ooh, an ice dragon because of contrast with the traditional fire dragon. But this is sick as like a desert dragon. And the character in the middle, like the the quality of the shine on these elements, like that, that sort of anime style, I know a goal of it is to deliberately sacrifice detail in terms of certain uh, elements of the character to, to make it read in a more... Um, general purpose, all-rounded way, right? If you have, like, a very simple face, it's easy for the reader or the viewer to put themselves in that face. But then you didn't skimp on the other details. Like, the realism of the fabric and this shine here and the way that these straps wind up the leg, whatever this, whatever this thing is. Oh, my God, incredible. Are there, are there progress picks? Oh my god, this is so cool to see. Working through from sketch to finalization. Damn. Some decorative element. I This is so sweet to see from here with just shapes, blocks, and colors to here. Oh my God, unbelievable. I'm so excited to see more of your work. If you got any more of your work, do rock, post it in chat. We'd love to see it. Metal Thulu is starting to learn Unity. I want to try to learn how to, uh, to work with the Unity game engine with an ultimate goal of trying to create some VR applications. For this project, I want to focus more on familiarity with the engine's use and capabilities rather than actually attempting to accomplish anything specific for the game. However, I will tailor some of my goals to focus on things that seem most relevant for uh, my game goal. We've talked about this a lot where we want to, in DK30, we want to focus on the inputs rather than the outputs. So instead of, I want to mess with Unity so that I learn it by the end of the month. That's kind of nebulous, it's kind of abstract. What's the actual output? And again, it can be easy to go, okay, so I'll make three games or I'll make this game project. But it's so much easier to control the inputs of, I will spend an hour and a half Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Ta-da. Um, yeah, dude, Metal Thula, let's, let's read some of this project review. Beyond my week-by-week -week reflections, I want to look back over the entire project and see how it went. I think it was very successful. My goal is setting up and starting to learn how to use Unity. A better grasp both how to interact with the Unity editor, as well as understanding of how objects, classes, and so on can be used. I also had to pick up knowledge for several other things along the way. I love VS Code. It's so good. I love C Sharp. It's so good outside of some of the 
passing by reference qualities of it. <laughs> and this is a really interesting one. I was successful at tailoring my setup testing work to align with some of the goals I have for a VR puzzly type game. I, I love Stepping Stone projects. I think that Collision's audio project is a great example of this. I'm trying to learn audio, so I came up with some simple gamelets to infuse audio into. Or, or to put audio into. And I feel like this always gives you permission to experiment a little more. To say, yep, I've completed it a little early. Because anytime you're working on something you care about, it's so easy to go into like perfectionism mode. As well as for the success of my secret goal of just trying to make myself just do things rather than taking forever to plan, watch, read, etc. Rather than actually coding. Yes! Especially at the start, it did take a bit more time than I hoped in that setup step. I actually didn't make myself just make things within the tool. Experimenting and just trying things. Some of the Unity provided tutorials that included projects to experiment in were very helpful. And by the end, I had switched to starting from programming and then only switching to videos when I had specific goals, questions I wanted answers to. Metal Thulu, hell yeah. I look forward to your upcoming VR funsy project. Ah, yes. Refi. I started uh, altering cards and I want to do it on a regular basis to build a portfolio and hopefully feel confident enough to start taking commissions. Done a lot of extended borders, but I want to practice more full altering. I'm aiming for three cards a week, and at least one of them being a full alter. Now, Refi, I do understand that there were some severe delays. I realized that my goals were just so unrealistic with the free time I have available. I haven't completed any week in full. I started a couple of cards and then scrapped them because they weren't good enough. Now I just gave up on the card I worked for the past hour because it was just unsalvageable. But it's okay. I'm satisfied with the things I've learned, especially from the failures. Yeah. Dude, understanding how much time I have, I'm still struggling with this. Uh, but Refi in chat says, make it three cards a month. Yeah, I think that's great. Like, there's a reason why my DK30 this time around was so remarkably unambitious. Like, I just want to watch some tutorials. Because this specific November and December, there's just a lot of stuff going on with work. Um, for instance, some of you may have seen, The Disturbance of Day 9 TV Town is back on Thursday. Oh, I'm very excited. Not Thursday tomorrow, but Thursday a week from tomorrow. So things like this have been eating into my time outside of streaming. And as a result, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to watch some tutorials. I probably spent a grand total of like 10 to 15 hours. Like, not a lot. But my God, knowing that that's how much I had to work with allowed me to do something and set a goal that I felt like I was capable of achieving. And let's not forget... Look at this incredible card altar. Negate, counter target spell. <laughs> this is the it shit. This is so good. Counter target non creature spell. Oh, yeah. No. Soul ring. Oh, my God. No, this, this is not a failure. I bought some gold leaf and wanted to experiment a bit, but the symbol turned out to be uneven, so I didn't even finish the card. I will try that one again. Yeah, dude. Dude, in search of the Elden Ring. And Refi, I love that you actually chose to show this because this is the sort of thing that if you look at, there's a lot of things compositionally that are beautiful about this. Like the coloration in the background, the framing of the dark here, and then the dark here to sort of accentuate the light here. I mean, it's great. And there's a difference between it being not satisfactory to you. And this is a great step towards making this look great. Because I, I think that there is the, um, I like the Ira Glass view of creative work of your output, your creative quality is not just what you are outputting. It is your outputting plus your taste. So, for instance, if you make this and go, yep, that's not to my taste level. Fantastic. Produce 100 cards over the course of a year. And then pick these 10. These are the 10 that are my actual work. Done. Like, you're allowed to do that. I remember old Blizzard talked about frequently how many games of theirs internally they canceled. Canceled tons of games. But when Blizzard was releasing hit after hit after hit, it's not necessarily because they were only producing hits. It's because they 
produced a lot of games and then had the good taste level to be able to pluck the good ones out and do the same thing for the components in there. This is awesome. I completely failed week two because I bought Remilda nothing but play for a week. <laughs> I mean, I think this is just beautiful. Oh my god, that's so good. I love the completion of this. This is kind of subtle where you don't actually have an image here to reference. Yeah, look, it's a crustacean. It's me. It's me. Ugh. I'm a th I'm a flash crab, baby. Clickety clack. I'm a crustacean. Yeah, hell yeah. You get a 10 out of 10 for me. Origata. I love getting one of these. Love hunting for every for a, a cleanup project every single DK30. My apartment is a huge mess in part because I've struggled with depression over the past few years. This project helped me give an energy boost and help create a better physical environment for me to be in. I want to clean up my apartment if possible to do some small projects I've been neglecting for years. Origata says, for my project, mild trigger warning for depression. Also, sorry for no images. Don't feel comfortable putting them openly on the internet. People are interested, DM me on Discord. No, like I'm someone who's very, very leery about doing that sort of thing. I want to I wanna know how the cleaning went. First, over the many days, or I didn't post anything. That is done quite easily, because I did not get anything done. Great. By the end, I just completely lost my motivation and couldn't get it going again. I want to I wanna hear about that. Oh, let's, let's read more. I had initially planned on doing a total of 24 hours of cleaning over one month. Two hours times three days times four weeks. Great. That goal proved to be a bit too much, and I reduced my target to one hour per session. I think that that that's par for the course for me. Uh, I feel like I can do one big session every two weeks, and then I can do like 30 minutes here or there. Total cleaning time logged ended up at eight and a half hours. Nice. About a third of the original target, not even 75% of the revised target. Dude, eight and a half hours is a lot. I mean, eight and a half hours is someone coming to your house at nine and doing nothing but cleaning shit up the entire day and then leaving. I think that's great. It's fair to say I feel pretty bad about that. When I set the initial goal, it seemed like an absolutely minimal target and having to cut that target down to half felt even worse. And I, this is where I really want to step in, firmly put the foot down about this. Um. Whoa, whoa, hey. There is something that happens psychologically where it's very easy to tell yourself, I, let me double check something. Let me double check something. I want to make sure that I'm not getting pained about going to the airport. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Air airport stuff. All right. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, what was I talking about? Yeah, th there's this weird thing that can happen where there's these hours that we have been told in some areas of our life and difficulty that, that has been shared to us in some areas of our life that we translate to real life and it doesn't quite work. For instance, in elementary school, you were at school for seven, eight hours a day, come home to a few hours of homework a night, Okay, so maybe I should treat my cleaning like homework. This is not something you said, but this is something that like many people I have discussed have framed exactly this sort of thing like that. They frame it like, oh, well, I should be able to just like do, you know, homework three days a week where I'm doing two hours of cleaning in each of those sessions, right? Isn't that great? Um, and the truth of the matter is, this is a strong opinion I have backed up by a lot of data and many of my own personal anecdotes. When you sit down to actually do shit, it is so hard for anyone to get fucking anything done. Because in school, in university, most of the time you are handed an exact template. <laughs> do exactly this. And in the real world, you're constantly having to figure out what you're supposed to be doing and then do it. And then if you think this is what I'm supposed to be doing and you do it, when you're done with it, you go, I shouldn't have fucking done this. And we don't actually, as humans in society, get a lot of practice with that. It's not like your teacher will go, go home and teach yourself math. And then you accidentally bake a cake and go, oh, fuck. 
So I think it's really easy to say, I'm going to set this cleaning goal for myself. To have not hit it and to feel bad about yourself. But you're actually doing great. Everything that you, you have done with trying to figure out a cleaning schedule and how to clean everything up properly and how to like organize your entire space is really fucking hard. Dude, I'm 36. I have an awesome career. I'm married to my best friend. I'm killing the game. I have no fucking clue how to clean this apartment. I, I have no clue. Like literally, let me make sure my box. Like I literally, I have like boxes here because I, I just like I don't know where to put this shit. Okay. <laughs> I I am someone that externally might describe as on top of their shit, but like cleaning stuff is like really challenging. Do I unpack and really decorate this place and soup it up if I think I'm gonna be moving later? Ooh, what do I do and so on. Oh. So anyways, I want to stress that this might seem like an absolutely minimal target to set yourself up for six hours a week. But it's not that it's a minimal target. What this was, was a first attempt at making really concrete a cleaning plan and learning more about that. Learning more about what you can and can't do. And so... Almost complete collapse of effort in terms of time spent in the last two weeks. Seems like validates the post I wrote around the end of week two where I described this project as taking the same path so many years of the years. Initial optimism, good starting effort. And then as soon as I start to feel proper resistance, my focus and motivation just falls apart. I then consign the project as another failure and suppress the worst of the guilt over not being able to do anything with my life and try to best move on, keep dragging all that guilt baggage behind me. Of course. Of course, we have all gone through things like this and it's terrible. And I want to say that we've all gone through things like this, not necessarily to say everyone has had depression because I know there's many people that have had it, many people haven't, many people that have different kinds and, and intensities of it. But here's the thing. I think that you're doing great. I think you're doing great, Origata. And something that might be helpful from this is to bite off a much smaller, completable thing like for us, for me and Britt, because we've been talking a lot about cleaning and rearranging things, we're going to have a cleaning weekend. Not this weekend because family's in town. But next weekend, we are going to try to just get the whole kitchen reorganized. And that's it. Literally, we close our eyes with respect to the rest of the house. It's just the kitchen. Just throwing away old pots, writing down new things that we need to do, pulling everything out, looking at it. And we're not even saying we're going to clean the kitchen in like four hours today. Literally, that's the only thing that we are going to try to do <laughs> for like two weekends. And our kitchen's also pretty clean. <laughs> that's it. That is it. And then once that's done, you know what we're going to do? Celebrate. We're going to party. Woo! We're the greatest. Hell yeah. And I mean, there's been times when I've been like feeling really just miserable about myself. And I just don't know what the fuck to do. And I literally set myself this small goal, close my eyes, and if I make any progress towards completing that, I celebrate. And when I say small, I mean like doing all my laundry. I do not have a lot of laundry. You see all the clothes I wear on this fucking broadcast, okay? I don't have a lot of clothes. So if I'm feeling really bad, I'm like, I will just do the laundry today. And I will do the laundry until I'm out of laundry to do. And go, good job, Sean. And then get myself a large Heineken and play Dota. And then the next day I'll go, I did a great job. I played Dota after getting those dishes done. Woo! You know, like... Um, and and this, this whole loop of, I have a really big goal. I'm starting out, things are going great. I'm hitting resistance. Oh, I must be a failure. Oh, this is a hard loop to break out of. This is a hard loop to break out of because the fact of the matter is I will I, I will get I will get MS paint so here is here is uh progress per hour and here is what's happening over time when you start out like let's let me let me do like a game project right here's my progress per hour is really high at the start of the project and then what often happens is then maybe I Oh shit, how does 
how does the physics engine in this engine work? So th this is something that happened to me really early on when I was doing game devy stuff. I was like, I'm writing code, I'm hitting buttons and my character's moving around, it's so amazing. But wait, like my bullets keep flying through walls and I'm not understanding how to make gravity work. And literally, I didn't get any fucking code written in here. Let's see, that must have been... This must have been like 10 weeks straight. This is about 10 weeks of just like literally, like, I, I don't understand how any of this stuff works. And then finally I started to go, oh, oh, okay. So now I can start to actually write code competently again. And I feel like this productivity per hour thing, this is often what people use to measure success. Where does this line actually lie? Oh, you're down here, you're shitty, you need to be up there. When in reality, if you look over the lifetime of a project, like if we extend this stuff way out, let's, let's go way over here, man. You're gonna have like all sorts of varying levels and you're just trying to like maximize the amount of time that you're spending because you know you're gonna hit these troughs. So you'll eventually wind up picking up good chunks of progress. And when, when you're cleaning, only recently have I been asking a lot of my friends about cleaning. Dude, this shit happens most of the time when cleaning. Because most of the problem with cleaning is if you don't know where everything is supposed to go, this is what happens. Like, if I need to put the, the plates onto the plate rack, we have one place where the plates go. That's the, that's the only time I can do this. But if you said to me, Sean, where should this where should this box of shit go that's behind you? Where does this box go? Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It has some stuff for the cats and like there's a jar in there or some shit. Like, I don't know where this shit's supposed to go. You wind up in this thing down here. And this is not representative of failure. This is just normal. It is normal to hit a point where you're just like, I'm going to try to clean. Dude, let me tell you something. I was talking about this a little bit. There's a time recently where we're like, let's clean. And we just sat there and looked at shit and talked for like 90 minutes. And then we're like, all right, done cleaning. Done cleaning. Because we just literally talked for a long time to figure out, okay, so if we get shit, we actually probably do need to buy one of those things, right? And then, okay, uh, maybe this. Hmm, do we need to throw this out? Yeah, so we should probably throw this out, but we don't want to throw it out until we get that other order in. Okay, and what about this? Like, it's completely normal. And so that's with respect to cleaning. I was wondering, it sounds like when I try to assign a place for a thing that didn't have a place before, or if that space got taken by something else. Yeah, because like now you have to choose where it's supposed to go and do I need to buy a box for it to go into to go to the place, but I don't have a place, so I need to buy a rack, you know, and all this stuff. And again, I, I, I will point to that that is like a normal part in any project. And I love this. Definitely positive results and to counteract my negative emotions. First and foremost, the product looks much better than it did five weeks ago. Woo! Hell yeah. I took a few pictures before I began, and when I took the look at those, I'm very surprised at what I managed to get done. Dude, this is... This is why I like code. Because I can always go back to a different version and be like, damn, I really am productive. Yeah, because if you are being really productive for a little bit and then you do one of these and then you come back up again, it's so easy to go like, oh, dude, literally half my month, I didn't do anything. Dude, you got all this shit done here and all this shit done here. Great job. Another important element I've learned is how much it meant to have my two accountability buddies along for the ride. Their input were great, and it also felt good to have someone to share the progress with. Even though I haven't done cleaning sessions according to the plan in the last few weeks, I found myself doing the small, simple cleaning tasks much more readily. For example, spending but a minute packing stuff away after I've used it so that it doesn't add to the clutter buildup. Awesome. Oh, my God. I think you should be really proud of yourself. I think you should be really proud of yourself. Bravo, Origata. And thanks for also giving us the chance to talk a little bit about, you know, the emotions around cleaning, because I think that they are underrepresented, societally speaking. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got we got two more projects. Shout out to Chum Bucket91. Says polish up Infinivania. 
I've been working with another day night, Op plays games, on a game project in Go.engine for over a year now. It's called Infinivania, and it is a procedurally generated, classic Vania rogue light like ish platforming game. Complete with wonky jump arcs and derpy homegrown NEF, NES graphics. For any of you who don't know, um, in some of the old Castlevania games, if you jumped, you had no control over your character once they jumped. So you just like, just fly. It is playable and fun for a particular flavor of Mass Kiss, but it's also not nearly ready for release. No, I did not know procedural gener generation was going to be a theme for this DK30. We were just lucky. Oh my god, yeah, look at Infinivania. Oh, dude, evil pumpkin. Oh my god, these graphics are perfect. Oh my god. Oh, it's divine. Oh, look at him. He's got little spectacles. Big Hammer, what more explanation do you need? And look, here's here's the character all tiny and in the corner. All right, we got some menus. Huzzah! There's a little blood on him. This is actually so funny. I hope you have your wits about you. It's so good. Oh my god, look at look at these little instructional gamers. Left, right, and jump. Not a fan of tutorials that are intrusive or take control away from the player. Just gonna lose some vague nonverbal instructions. Hell yeah. And hey, look, we got Infinivania by Chum Bucket. Oh my god, look at this typeface! From the painted worlds of the mad Vladovich von Painter and this procedurally generated classic action platformer. Oh my god, yes. Well, hey, if any of you have interest in trying out Infinivania, check it out on uh, chumbucket91.itch.io. Oh, I love that she just appended this game to our little DK30. And last but not least, we're going to end with Aramus. So over the past six months, I've been working on my first ever commercial game, Chess Survivors. Does this link to a Steam page? Let me just make sure that I don't dox myself here. Perfect. All right, great. Over that time, this game has come a long way. I've learned a ton. For this DK30, I want to get the final touches completed for the early access release on November 10th. One of the backbones for my project has been focusing on input as opposed to output, so instead of focusing on making the next indie hit, focusing on making a game I'm proud of and getting it actually released. Hell yeah, Adamus. Chess survivors. Oh, look at that little seductive jester with his piece. What is it? Where does he want to put that? Retrospective. Well, I did my game Chess Survivors is now in early access. Bam. Look at this. So if we look at some of the footage, peel this back. It's like a turn-based real-time game. Oh! Survive the gambit! Oh, that's so interesting. It's like chess pieces. Moving in chessic ways. Die, learn, repeat. Careful, that might be copyrighted. Oh, shit. So you have a limited amount of time. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is... Oh, dude, I, I love just literally bluntly being like, it's literally chess. But vampire survivors. Everyone moves like a chess piece. Hell yeah. And look at this. We got positive reviews on Steam. Look at this. Dude, dude you gave someone entertainment for over four hours. Whatever the game intensifies over time, has enough challenge. So many abilities, relics, and characters. Very well done. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Awesome taking advantage on Survivor's genre. General knowledge of chess is very helpful. <laughs> oh, look at this. 8.2 hours. They reviewed, and then they played for another five hours. Oh, yeah. Dude, 13.9. Great indie game. Very addictive. Oh, dude, Aramus. Look at this. Developer Aramus and publisher Aramus. <laughs> Nominate this game for the Steam Awards. Hell yeah. Look, and it's $3. What a great price point. Oh, my God. Everyone go buy 100 copies now. 
Never gift me subs ever again. All right. I, 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 I didn't realize it was four. I need to leave very, very soon. All right. Yeah, no, I, I literally have to get... I need to go to the airport right now. I need to pick up my family from the airport. I'm picking up family for the airport. So um, let me just warmly thank and congratulate all of you who participated in DK30 this year. It is so fun to see the amazing work that you do every single time. Uh, I'm going to be out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which I'm always out on, and then Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be the next stream. It'll be Vermintide. Let me try that again. Wednesday will be the next stream. It'll be Dark Tide. <laughs> and then December is going to be a mix of Marvel Snap, uh, probably some Path of Exile in there, the Disturbance of Day 9 TV Town, some other game releases coming up for the holiday seasons. So look forward to seeing you then and closing out the year strong. Da -da 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 -da.